Hi there, welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. Thanks for joining us today. We are coming at you with another Coffee Break episode where we are taking questions that you guys have submitted to us. Today is one topic that uh, feels really kind of at the heart of prayer. Like this honestly feels like the crux of prayer and and what you believe on this issue uh, really is going to shape your prayer life. So I'm really glad we're diving in to this and let's open up with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this time to discuss this question and um, just for Virginia sending the question in Lord and just wanting to draw closer to you and understand you more. We just pray that your spirit would be here with us, Lord, that we would be able to just have a great conversation that would um, bring glory to you and just help us to come to a better understanding of who you are and how prayer works. Amen. Amen. So today's question is from Virginia. And like I said, I feel like this really lies at the crux of your prayer life, like what you believe about this question is going to, like, I don't want to be over dramatic, but I feel like it really can just make or break your prayer life. And it's also Mm -hmm. something that Christians don't agree on. Um, So I'm super, super excited to dive into this. So Virginia says, I often think, why pray? God knows what he is doing in each situation. Okay, totally, totally get that. And then, you know, the the heart of it that she adds is, do we change God's plan when we pray? So I think if I were to paraphrase, it's, okay, God already knows the future. He already knows what's going to happen. So why do we bother to pray? Like, does that, is that what you hear in this question, Jamie? Yeah. And I think it goes deeper than just, does God know what's going to happen or does he know what he wants to happen? Like, it's not just like he sets everything on this course, but it's like, well, God knows what's going to happen. And the question is, do we, are we able to steer God or are we able to, um, well, I think there are two separate questions here. I think number one, number one, the question I think is, can we change God's mind? Mm Mm-hmm. Can our life or, or can a circumstance be on one trajectory and can we, okay, hold on. No, no. No, I, I totally get where you're going. But I, I think, think it's too. So number one, does prayer change God and his plans? Right. And number yeah. two, does prayer change things? I uh-huh. think those are two separate branches of the same question. Yeah, that's a really interesting way to look at it. Um, so maybe before, and I'm not even sure, Jamie, that you and I like align a hundred percent in this. So again, this is just going to be a really interesting discussion, but I think maybe before we kind of dive into what we see in scripture, maybe we could just talk about kind of caricatures of the extremes so that people can sort of see what's at stake depending on how you believe. So I feel like in so many cases on this podcast, we kind of warn against going to unhealthy extremes. And so on the one extreme of what you believe about this is the totally fatalistic, wishy-washy Christian who never prays or they only pray because they have to, but it's very much a God's already going to do what God's going to do. You know, so your dog gets sick and you're going to be devastated. We just took my dog to the vet. That's why it's on my mind. She's not sick, thankfully. But you know, like your dog is sick, you're devastated, you're going to be, you know, broken up if you have to put your dog down. But you're not going to pray for God to heal your pet because you just assume God already knows his plan for my pet. Um, This mindset does have a semblance of, I'm sure you can even tell by the way I'm talking about it where I, where I fall, but it has a semblance <laughs> of faith because it, it presumes to be like, well, God knows more than I know. And so I'm going to leave the end result up to him. But it also has a very fatalistic, it doesn't matter what I pray anyway. Like sometimes I, I totally need, like I really get on my son for doing this. He'll come up to me. Mom, I know you're probably going to say no anyway, (laughs) but can I do this thing that I really want to do? And he doesn't quite sound like that, but it's kind of (laughs) close. That really, really, really gets on my nerves. And so I don't want to talk to God like that. So that's kind of the one extreme of just being so fatalistic that we don't 
pray at all, or we have no faith in the power of our prayers. And then Jamie, do you maybe want to talk about the opposite extreme? Yeah, I think the opposite extreme would be that you feel like, yes, prayer does change things. And the Bible says, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. And the prayer in faith is, you know, powerful and effective. And, you know, I probably just butchered some scripture, but basically you just plow ahead without mm-hmm. any regard for anything but what you want in your heart. Exactly. And yeah. Expect that God is like a cosmic Santa that you can mm-hmm. just pray and basically demand. Yes. Um, and you know, it's kind of funny because actually in scripture, there are some examples of like the persistent widow or um, mm-hmm. Jacob wrestling with God, you right. know, and things of, well, you know, they're just like there are elements of not fatalism, but elements on the other end of the spectrum yes. of, you know, mm-hmm. well, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He doesn't take away every thorn. So right. I, right. I, yeah, but, but those are the extremes. Yes. And I think I really like the way you put it at one point when we were talking about it, Jamie, you kind of use this example of like bulldozing, like yeah. bulldozer prayers. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just going to plow ahead. I know what I want. I'm going to make demands of God until he gives it to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, yeah, I think we're both in a hundred percent agreement that that is an, also an extreme to avoid. Mm-hmm. So um, I know you've done a little bit of kind of thinking and outlining for this question. Do you just kind of want to give a little bit of summary of where you're coming from on this? Yeah. So this, the, some of my thinking of this went into one of our videos on the smash your prayer blocks, um, online prayer retreat. Um, Mm -hmm. and it basically is based on, um, so Jennifer Kennedy Dean, who's an author and speaker, um, has a book called, um, Oh my goodness. I just drew a blank. She's got a book. And live a out. praying life. Live Here a praying go. life. It's an amazing <laughs> book. And we are actually going to be having her come on the podcast to talk about Yay. it. But, um, but it's called Live a Praying Life. And she talks about this. And she brings up some examples of um, standing in the gap. So here's, you know, the importance of intercession, basically, yeah. is, is what she's talking about. And so in Ezekiel 22, 30 to 31, it says... Um, I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it, but I found no one. So therefore, I'm going to pour out my wrath on them and consume them with my fiery anger. So basically, this is showing that God was looking for someone to stand in the gap on behalf of the land, to intercede, to beg for mercy, but he found none. And and so this is... Um, What's interesting to me, this was what Jennifer Kennedy Dean had in her book and was kind of expounding on this passage about stand before me in the gap. What I found was really interesting was at the same time when I was kind of looking into this, I had come across 2 Samuel chapter 5, where it talks about um, David went to, uh, or David inquiring of the Lord, shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord answered him, answered him, go, for I will surely deliver the Philistines into your hands. So David went to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, as waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So that place was called Baal Perazim. So Baal Perazim means God of the breach. Perazim means breach or breakthrough. And if you look at, you know, when I That is the same word that is used in stand in the gap. The word for gap is the same as that word for breach. And so what really like the light bulb went off for me was that those words are the same. And so the picture that I got for intercession is that, you know, if this picture of um, waters breaking out and you, you picture this valley or this breach or this gap, and, and the waters basically break out through it, um, kind of like when the Red Sea was parted and then Pharaoh and his armies were swept away with the water, when the water just broke out against the enemies. Um, 
and it went back to what Jennifer said about, you know, she talks about prayer and intercession as standing in the gap and that the intercessor is kind of the conduit of God's power, is like the connection from God's will being activated and, and kind of um, like a, a conduit of his will being activated in our lives and in the, on the earth. And so I just felt like that was really interesting that the intercessor, that's us, needs to stand in this gap. But if you just stand in the dry riverbed by yourself, nothing's going to happen. But if the power of God is behind it, it's going to break through and it's going to just pour out God's will and, and amazing things. So I just thought that in itself tells me that God wants to use us in prayer and that it is important and that it isn't just, you know, God required that intercessor to stand there before he would allow his will to, you know, his will when he said, I looked for someone to build the wall and stand before me, but I didn't find any, which implies to me that if someone had been there, he would have spared them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's my thought. And to me, I feel like that's biblical evidence and maybe a roundabout way of saying that while I personally don't believe that, that prayer changes God himself, but I do believe it can open doors for God's will to be unleashed on the earth that would be closed if we didn't pray. Right, right. I think I would agree with that semantically that prayer, God doesn't change. You know, like I can't pray and make God love me more. I can't pray and make God more forgiving than he already is. I can't pray and make God more powerful than he is. But I firmly believe that I can pray and change the outcome of world events, personal events. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, and, and not everybody's going to agree with me on this. To me, if I didn't have that conviction, I would very much be in this camp of, well, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Now, some people will say that your prayers don't change God's plans because God already knows what his plans are, but they can change you. You know, so let's say you're in the midst of a divorce and you're begging God to save your marriage. God already, these people who fall into this camp would say, well, no, God's already answered whether or not your marriage is going to end in divorce. He already knows that he's already like nothing you can do can change that. But by praying about it, God can make your heart at peace with the outcome. Now, I I have a lot of people I know who take that viewpoint and I definitely respect it. And I think that it does take a tremendous amount of faith to be able to, to say, you know what, God, God's will be done. In my opinion though, if my prayers can't change that outcome, just praying for my own benefit isn't worth it. <laughs> like that kind of really fervent prayer. Like when you were talking about intercession, I was thinking about the story where there was the battle and was it Moses who was standing with his arms out? And as long as his arms were outstretched, oh, right. Battle, as long as they were, and people were holding his arms and out. Like his they arms got so tired. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's an example of intercession for sure. I mean, it, it mm -hmm. is an example of intercession because as long as his arms are outstretched, that army would win. The Israelites would win when his arms got tired and he put them down, it would lose like his posture of prayer and I think that that's what we can see the arms outstretched as representing, you know, his intercession and prayers for the army had a actual definitive impact on the course of history, but it was exhausting for him. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where I'm at. Like if, if my marriage were on the brink of divorce and I'm praying for my marriage, I am sure as everything going to be pouring so much just emotional and mental and spiritual and even physical energy into that prayer that to me it wouldn't be worth it if the only outcome i'm going to get is to feel a little bit better if god says eh, you guys are still going to split up but i'm going to make it okay for you right to yes and and of course like anything there's the balance of sometimes he'll say no you know sure. some and, and that his reasons are higher. I mean, the thing that, that made me think about this was, um, you know, I was just thinking if we meditate on God's qualities, 
his infinite goodness, his infinite justice, his infinite power, his all knowingness, <laughs> omniscience, and his omnipotence and all seeing, if he chooses to veto that prayer request for reasons unknown to us, is that such a bad thing? But that's different from saying it never changes the outcome because I yes. don't believe, I believe that you have to always in the back of your mind know that kind of like Jesus in Gethsemane, well, mm -hmm. thy will be done, but sure. I will pray with all that I have. I will, and I, and I really believe that, that there is a line because you can, mm -hmm. you can do the cop out thing and just end every prayer just for fun with, but whatever you want, God. Right. <laughs> and I don't think we want to go there. I really don't. I don't think we want to just, I think we want to always have that on our hearts, but I don't think we want to just tag it on. Yes. Almost superstitiously like, well, but I, you know, I, if you decide not to work in this way, yeah. I don't want to, you know, make you look bad. Kind of like my son, mom, I know you're probably going to say no, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. And so, you know, I definitely fall in the camp where I wholeheartedly believe that my prayers can change history and change personal circumstances. But I also believe that, like you said, God might not answer my prayers. And he might <laughs> so, change your prayers. I think and yes, the he's other definitely side done that too. Yeah. Is, yeah. So for me, it's kind of like, go forward. If I really sense in my spirit, that God, like once this is actually a super sad story, but someone I knew fell into a coma and I decided then and there, you know what, I am going to go to battle and ask God to save this person's life. And all it, and like I said, like when I get into that kind of prayer, like it's not just a, yeah, please help her if it's your will. Mm -hmm. Like this is a, all my energy, all my focus, all my attention, all my spiritual energy was going to be just go into this prayer. It was kind of like, God, here I am. I am, if not literally, at least figuratively on my knees until I am convinced that you heard me. That's what I went into this prayer as. All it took was a couple minutes and I just had a sense of my spirit. You know what? This, this isn't the direction that God wants me to pray. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, I forget the exact details. Like, there was a lag time between when basically she, she was already dead before it was announced super publicly because it, I think it was like family had to be contacted or something. So I don't remember, like she might have already passed at that point, but I, I just kind of knew, eh, I, I don't really feel like God's giving me the green light to do like warfare prayer for this but thing. But he answered your prayer very directly. I mean, he, mm -hmm. you can't call that unanswered prayer because he, you know, and so I just think that's a great example of, and a very sad example of, yeah. um, but just, I, I agree, just the importance of going into it with, with passion. If you're passionate about something, you know, I think it's also um, part of the pitfall that we fall into of, not praying because, oh, God's going to do what he wants anyway. We can even take it to an extreme. Well, if it's something that I want a lot, it must not be what God wants because my heart yeah. is deceitful or because mm -hmm. I, I couldn't possibly, that would be selfish to pray right. for that. But sometimes God uses our, you know, we have to be very careful about emotion versus right. God. But if you are passionate about something or if you hear someone mention something and you're just like, oh, I need to pray for that. That could be God prompting you and pushing you forward to be that one to stand in the gap to unleash his power in a way that people can see and know that it was him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, again, we're talking just kind of about this balance of absolute faith that God may use your prayers to absolutely change someone's life or to change the course of history. But in the end, he still does know what's best you know, and I think that we need to be careful to avoid both extremes. I, I don't think that we should go to the extreme of just any issue that comes up. Oh God, your will be done. Like I, I think about this a lot kind of in like politics and current events. I think there's a sense amongst a lot of Christians that, well, Jesus said that things are going to get a lot better, or I'm sorry, a lot worse 
before he comes back. Mm -hmm. So bring it on, God. <laughs> you know, so there's, you know, if you hear about wars and rumors of wars and famines and earthquakes and all these terrible things that we know precede the end times, we kind of are like, well, yeah, I don't want to pray against that because that's, that's God getting ready to come back. But again, to me, if I were the victim of a terrible massacre or, you know, my city was under siege and my family was starving, I would very much want people in other parts of the world to be praying, mm -hmm. not just for God's will to be done, but for me to survive. <laughs> and again, that doesn't mean I'm going to, but I think that sometimes we're just way too quick to roll over and just accept that the world is going to do what the world's going to do. And we really don't recognize the power that God has given us to be involved in the outcome of history. You know, like think about Abraham interceding for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, if only 10 righteous people are found in this city, will you spare it? And God says, yeah, I'll go ahead and spare it. You know, um, in the end, Sodom and Gomorrah didn't get spared. So, you know, I guess in that story, we do see both sides. We see God allowing himself and his future decisions to be influenced by the intercession of others. And yet in the end, his will is done. But I guess some people are probably too quick to forget the intercession side of it and just go to, okay, God's will be done. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. So keeping, I guess, where practically do we find the balance of believing firmly that our prayers can change history and change the world and change our circumstances, but also having a heart of surrender and openness for God to be God? I think some of that can come from cultivating a two-way communication with God and Obviously, I don't, and I, you have to be careful with listening right. and knowing God's voice, but I really am a firm believer, and I know you are too, that the more you practice listening, the more clear and the more recognizable God's voice is going to be. And I think just giving yourself quiet and white space and, and not always being mm -hmm. the first one to speak during prayer or yeah. to speak and then listen so that you can invite God to shape your prayers. I think that is the most exciting thing for me is, you know, and to be honest, I can probably count on my hands. It's my hands, my fingers. <laughs> I can count on my hands. No. One, two. Two. <laughs> no, I can count on my fingers the times that I've had these like visceral, I need to pray boldly for this particular thing and I know it's going to happen. And um, that's not the norm for me. But when it does happen and I have listened and received from God and he's given me that burden on my heart and I pray for it and I see it happen, it's amazing. Like I, I look mm -hmm. back on those as Ebenezer's, you know, to what God yeah. has done and it's so faith building. And I think just one or two of those in your life gives you that fire to move forward and, and to continue because we don't always get it right. And I've had lots of disappointments and continue to, and I still get confused. And um, I even wrote a blog post about just a silly prayer about a parking space um, and, or about my, my husband picking me up at Costco, just being disappointed because I prayed and I thought, well, if God's not going to answer my, you know, I, I was stranded mm -hmm. kind of at Costco. If yeah. God's not going to answer that little prayer, then is, is he capable of answering a big one? you know, and I still have those struggles. So I guess that rambling is to say, you're not alone in this question. <laughs> we right. all struggle with this question, but I think one of the keys is, is just moving forward in your relationship with God and maybe listening and asking him to shape your prayers. For sure. Yeah. And maybe even just seeing where you personally need to focus. Like I know, even just in having this conversation, I know that there are times when I would do well and do better to keep God's sovereignty more in mind and to, you know, to recognize, hey, just because I'm praying fervently for this doesn't mean he's going to change it. Whereas other people, you know, you might be on the other side of the spectrum where you need to kind of embolden yourself to realize, you know, my prayers might change things. They might not. I like the Phillips Craig and Dean song, um, 
he can settle any sea, but it doesn't mean he will. Do you know that one? And sometimes he calms the storm. Oh, yeah. And sometimes he calms yeah. the storm. Yeah. And I really like that. You know, he can stop that storm, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean he will. Yeah. And I think if you keep both, both halves of that equation in mind when you pray, then you really are getting to that point of being kind of unstoppable because you know that your prayers can stop a storm or move a mountain, but it doesn't mean that it's going to. And I think if you can keep both halves of that equation in mind, then you're at a really, really good place. Yeah, I think so too. Because I think I'm on kind of the other end of, I'm not on the super extreme, but I'm, I'm definitely, I could, I could use a little more, uh, I could use a little less fatalism in my yeah. prayers and a little more boldness. Yeah. And what I could use is probably more of a surrendered heart, you know? where like we do see Jesus in Gethsemane, not my will, but your will be done. And I think that, yeah. So what we need to do, Jamie, is like the next time we're together in person, like you'll run this way and I'll run this way and we'll do this like chest bump thing. And maybe right. we'll, you know, like mesh our two together and, and then we'll go and take over the world with our prayers. Wonder Twin Powers, activate. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, how about we're going to jump into our prayers for the unsaved, but how about I'll just kind of wrap up this section in a word of prayer and then we'll jump into that. Sounds good. God, I just want to thank you so much for this question that we got and just for the fact that you are sovereign and that you know what is best for your children, God. And we recognize both your sovereignty as well as your absolute power. And I pray that you would help Help us and help everybody listening to just keep in mind both sides of this, that you can settle any sea, and that doesn't mean you will. And just help us to increase our faith and have more effective prayers. And God, we just are so thankful for the gift that we have to just enter boldly into your throne room, Lord. Amen. Amen. I think one of the areas that is just so powerful to be praying boldly is in prayers for the unsaved. And that's um, where we're at now. That's the time in our podcast where we pray together for the one to three people that God's put on your heart who don't know the Lord that you're going to just pray for for the long haul. And you can get these prayers at prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved. And you'll get one prayer in your inbox daily for 30 days and you'll have just all these different aspects of praying for the unsaved people in your life so let's pray god you are powerful and faithful the heavens declare your praise you've created so many things and they are all good today lord i ask that you would reveal yourself to my friend through nature let them see your glories let them see your creative power let them feel your love as you display your majesty before their very eyes. It sounds so difficult to witness the glory of nature without worshiping you. Don't let my friend continue to deny your existence. Soften their hearts so they can acknowledge you. Please tug at my friend's soul until they're inspired to worship you as their creator and call on you as their savior. Amen. Amen. And again, if you have questions that you want to submit or that you feel could lend to some good discussion on a future Coffee Break episode, you could submit those at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. If you have submitted a question, I want you to know that we have received it. We've just gotten a lot of feedback, so we are still making our way through those questions. So don't feel bad if we haven't gotten to yours yet. It is there. Um, and please keep on sending them in. We really love hearing from you. We love the interaction. If you are a regular listener, just pop over and say hi. You can contact us at our website at prayingchristianwomen.com. We would love to just have you spread the word to, to your friends or on social media. If you find that these episodes are encouraging, just help us spread the word. That would be awesome. So thanks again, and we will see you guys next time.